And it's 15 minutes before the hour right now. Just the name Katherine Hepburn says so much about the strong woman she played on screen and the strong woman she is off screen. When the Kennedy Center honored her last night here in Washington, it was a tribute to someone who's not only a great movie star, but a great American. To sit down and chat with her is a rare treat, and I had that treat very recently. We talked about movies and men and the many ways of being Katherine Hepburn. In a film career spanning over six decades, Katherine Hepburn has played them all. Struggling actresses. The calla lilies are in bloom again. Debutantes. I'm Tracy Lord. And queens. What a life's work. Drawing room charmers, devoted lovers, and tyrannical mothers. Sebastian saw the face of God. You're my knight in shining armor. She's been gentle and tender, spirited and bold. You're as hard as nails. No, I just hate hypocrisy. From her first appearance on screen in 1932's A Bill of Divorcement, it was obvious that her choice to become an actress was the right one, but a choice made with some reservation. When you originally told your father you were going to go into acting, he thought that was a cheesy thing to do. I can understand his thinking that. I think he was right. You do? <laughs> well, I don't, think, I don't think it's right being a doctor. I thought of being a doctor. And then I thought, well, when I wanted to be a doctor, they didn't, and women didn't operate, they didn't do anything. It was thrilling. So I thought, well, I can't do that. Did you ever change his mind about the profession you chose? I don't know. We can't ask him. Can't we? Did he we ever could try. Did he ever change his mind? Is more to the point. Yes, I think he did. He accepted the inevitable. I accept the inevitable, too. That's the only way to live. Aren't you a kind of a girl scout? Just a girl who uses her brain. Anyhow, I wanted to show you that I can act. You are a faker. Oh, we're both fakers. Isn't faking the essence of acting? I think acting is a sort of gift that goes with your looks and your nature. And I just think I was born at the right time for me, you know. I don't believe that. <laughs> yes, I do think that's true. I think if you're lucky enough to belong to the era that you live in, in a very strong way, as I did, uh, or do, then you're lucky. So I'm lucky. From now on, I'm accepting no part unless I feel that I'm particularly fitted for it. Luck has brought her a record-breaking 12 Oscar nominations and four wins as Best Actress. One for her youthful morning glory and three for roles she played when she was well into her 50s and older. I dressed my maids as Amazons and rode bare-breasted halfway to Damascus. Louis had a seizure and I damn near died of windburn. But the troops were dazzled. Now in her 80s, she spends more time writing than acting, not because she's retired from the screen, but because the material is simply not to her liking. It would be very difficult for me to find anything that I would like to do. Because dreary stories about the sadness of becoming, you know, older and older and older, I think it's a bore. There, there it is, and it's a bore. Don't eat it, you know. What do you think of the, the quality of films that, that are being turned out now? Well, I don't know. I think they're probably desperate for material. I, I can't believe that the public is quite as vulgar as they're assuming that it is, but maybe they are. I don't know. Vulgarity does not take the place of humor, I don't think. Now, I think you have to use your imagination to live happily. You must have imagination and be fascinated by the wonders of the world instead of destroyed by the uh, sort of factual attitude. I mean, there are several ways to describe everything. and. The factual way is not always the way to inspire one's joy and desire to live, is it? While Katherine Hepburn is one of the world's most celebrated actresses, her private life has remained her own. Recently, however, in a book of candid and revealing photos, she allowed a rare glimpse of the private world of Katherine Hepburn, 
a world before shared only by those closest to her. There's a, a shot that is absolutely captivating of you dipping into uh, ice water. Yeah. I swim all winter long because it improves my character to be able to make myself do anything as unpleasant as it is because <laughs> it's a terrible shock. You still find it unpleasant after all well, these years. Well, I find it a shock, but I like shocks. I think it wakes you up. Well, In a 25-year screen partnership with Spencer Tracy, the Hepburn style blossomed. So did Tracy's, and so did their off-screen relationship. But Tracy, a devout Catholic, would not divorce and remained with his wife. Hepburn, like her characters, remained independent, outspoken, and very much her own woman. In talking about your, your sense of individuality, you have said in the past that you tasted a freedom that a lot of women haven't tasted sure. because you've lived like a man. What, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, I paid for this house. <laughs> I do what I want to win the house. And I'm not married so that I'm not dependent on anyone, except I'm dependent on everyone, as we all are. But I mean, I've done pretty much as I wanted to. Is I haven't moved anyone in here who could tell me what to do. <laughs> Let's say that. Do you think that life in many ways has gotten tougher for women? I think obviously when they uh, decided that they should go out and see who am I? Am I something thrilling? Am I fascinating? Now, I thought I was fascinating. So I thought, I'm not going to get involved in all that husband and kid business. I married a nice man, tortured him, used up all his money, drove his automobile, and said goodbye. And he was an angel. Now, I knew it. And I tried to make up he's now dead to him for the enormous generosity of his spirit. And I certainly realized that I was a total pig. Now, that's not good, is it, to be a pig? Well, the problem is that most women have to work now. I mean, if, if, if no, you have an economy... No, they fixed it so that they have to work, so that they have to have two cars, so that they have to have an elaborate house. So they have to be able to do this, that, and the other thing and have 25 television sets. They've done that. Are you basically, though, saying that those of us that are trying to raise a family and work at the same time are being selfish? Well, selfish or stupid or kidding themselves. But the it's... option that you're saying we have is either becoming a pig, in your words, or an independent woman. There's no happy medium in there. I don't mean a pig, but I mean if I'm interested in me, as I have been, at least I saw accurately that I was interested in me. And I did everything I could to make me succeed. And I did not get married and have children. I think not, not, not always is it, a, is it a mistake for the woman to work. I mean, she could be a painter, she could be a writer, a lot of things that she could do at home. Or can she force the man to give up his job? If he's dumb compared to her, couldn't she say, you stay home and learn to be a great cook and make the children fascinating, and I'll bring home the bacon? But somebody has to do something. What are you going to do? I don't know. With all her success and the trappings that go with it, Katherine Hepburn looks to other values to give her life its real meaning. I think chasing things, you know, material things, rather than spiritual needs, over chasing them is stupid. Because they don't mean anything. Unless you have a soul. They don't, really, unless you have a spirit, unless you can love, that you can do things and help and be useful and amount to something in the world we live in. So that when you pass out, you'll be missed. They won't just be selling off all things you could buy, you know. I feel like I could listen on and on and on. 
In your long, long talk with her, did you get any idea from her that she might make another movie at some point? She didn't really say. She said she writes a lot and she reads a lot and she's so discriminating that there isn't much coming to her home that she would consider doing. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. She obviously, you can see, is so vital and uh, so full of creativity still. Before I let you go here, I did want to mention one thing to you about her, her values. I did pose the question about what the newest thing was that we could find in her closet, and she said probably 35 years old. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great interview. Thanks, Paula. Thank you.